souls. Alleluia, alleluia. gospel will be the basis for the sermon today. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 22. Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. Then he sent some more servants and said, Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fattened cattle have been butchered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his field, another to his business. The rest seized his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. So... Go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. He asked, How did you get in here without wedding clothes, friend? The man was speechless. Then the king told the attendants, Tie him hand and foot. And throw him outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated. We can be certain that we have the right clothes to wear to get into God's heavenly home because we have the righteousness of Jesus assured for us by the gospel message. We sing about that with our next hymn, the hymn of the day, 568, His Robes for Mine.
Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The portion of the word we're looking at is our gospel from St. Matthew, chapter 22. Followers of Jesus, the tension was rising. Heat was increasing. Jesus was coming to the end of his ministry upon this earth in Israel. After spending three years healing people and preaching about God's love, the religious leaders of Israel had completely turned against him. Our gospel takes us right into Holy Week. After Jesus on Sunday had ridden in there on the donkey to the acclaim, now only to face the opposition of this city. And Jesus spent the time teaching, telling stories, especially the three stories that we've heard these past three weeks. There was a story that Jesus told about the man who had two sons. One son said he wasn't going to do any work, but then he did it. The other son said he would do the work, but he then didn't do it. That was a wonderful promise. Even if we've spent our lives there going away from God, there still is time to get right with the Lord, to follow him. But also a warning to those of us who might say that we're Christian, say we're going to do all sorts of good things, but we then don't follow up. It was also a specific indictment of those Jewish leaders who would not repent of their sins, even though other people they looked down upon, the sinners, were repenting and following after Jesus. Then Jesus told the story we heard last week about a landowner who sent his servants to gather together the crop from his huge farm, only to have the workers, the tenant workers, attack them, beat them, kill them and even end up killing the landowner's own son. Those workers, of course, were punished. Again, a warning to all of us that we don't simply be greedy with the things we have on this earth, but we serve God. But also, specifically, this was a warning against those Jewish leaders who were already conspiring against Jesus, the Son of God, to have him killed. But Jesus wasn't finished yet. In today's gospel, he tells a story about God's kingdom. A king is throwing a wedding banquet for his son. You can only imagine how wonderful that word be. He sent word out to the guests to tell them that everything was ready, but they refused to come. Again, the Jewish leaders were refusing God's invitation to trust him, even after Jesus had done so much love, shown God's love in their own streets. No, they weren't following him. So in the story, the king sends out his servants to invite other people, anyone they could find, so that his banquet hall would be full. And here, we really see God's amazing love, even in this world that's filled with sin and rejection. Sinful people may sin against God. Even the religious people may reject the Lord God, but he still loves us. He still invites people to continue to come into his eternal banquet. He invites, as he says, everyone, the good and the bad, the great and the weak. There's room for all of us. Come to the feast. That's what our Lord tells us today. Jesus' story of this wedding banquet, it says so much about our God. He invites people who don't deserve to be in his kingdom. And he invites us again and again. In this story, the king started out dealing with the invited guests. They'd gotten the the save-the-date card. They'd gotten the invitation. Now the time's come, and he's sending word so that they know everything is ready. When Jesus was on earth, he made God's love obvious to his people. Jesus spent his time healing people. He drove demons out of people. This is how he used his power as God, always to do good things. Jesus talked to those people who were caught up in sins, the ones that everybody else looked down upon, the tax collectors and and the prostitutes. And Jesus told them that God loved them. He led them to repent of their sins and to trust the gospel, to trust in him. This is what God is like. God loves sinners. Yet, the Jewish leaders rejected God's invitation. They argued with Jesus. For example, when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, the Jewish leaders used that as an opportunity to conspire to have Jesus arrested and even killed. They wouldn't come, we would say, to his banquet. Well, in the story, the king didn't give up. He's merciful. 
He's gracious. He abounds in love for his people. He sent even more servants. Tell those who've been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fattened cattle have been butchered and everything is ready. No corners were being cut here. This wasn't like that old Steve Martin movie, The Father of the Bride, where the father tries to get out of all the money there for his daughter's wedding, you know, so he finds an old tuxedo that he'd outgrown. He offers that he'll make barbecue for everybody. He cuts down the wedding list there as much as possible. No, that's not what's happening here. This is a feast. This is a royal wedding, after all. And the king says, tell them, Tell the invited guests just what's going on. Give them the details about how wonderful this feast is going to be. How could they possibly say no? I read about a Dutch movie back in the 1980s called Babette's Feast. It's about a group of older people living there in Belgium, I think it was, who were pretty austere in their life. They took in a refugee from Paris who turned out to have formerly been a five-star chef in Paris. But now this woman had absolutely nothing. She offered to make their food for them. They said, okay, but they wanted to stick with their regular food. So every day they ate their plain, simple fish soup each day. But then this woman won the lottery. And she said she wanted to bring a real feast for the people of that village. She went out, she got the best ingredients from the whole country and made this amazing food. They'd never eaten anything like it. But the best thing about the meal was how it changed those people. They stopped fighting. They stopped being so bitter. Instead, they were looking out for other people, helping people, and thanking God because of this amazing, wonderful meal that had been given to them. Well, when our God here invites us to a banquet in heaven, it is so amazing. It can have an absolutely life-changing effect upon us. And God wants everyone to know just how wonderful his feast is. And so he sends out messengers to say it again and again, how loving God is and how beautiful heaven will be. And yet, in Jesus' story, even after this overwhelming invitation, the guests refuse. One went to his field, another to his business. Reminds us of what we heard last week in Philippians. Their God is their belly. Their minds are set on earthly things. Even worse, though, were the other guests who actually attacked and killed the king's servants. Well, the king responded as we expected. He had his army sent to take those out, to destroy those murderers and burn their city. Time had run out on the king's patience. And remember, this king is the Lord Almighty. There is such a thing as God's righteous anger. God will not be mocked by people who continue to reject him. If they reject him, in the end, they will be rejected too. But now, what would the king do? He's got this feast ready. He's got this banquet hall all prepared, all the silverware, everything laid out there, and nobody's there. Well, he told his servants, go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out in the streets and gathered all the people they could the bad as well as the good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. This might remind you of the Thanksgiving feasts that are held sometimes at missions or at shelters, rescue shelters, how wonderful it is for the people who can come there. Some of them may have nothing, and now they get to enjoy a wonderful meal. And how wonderful for the people who volunteer, the people who spend their holiday serving these other people and then sitting down together, rich and poor together, enjoying this wonderful time together, all being blessed together. That is what heaven will be like. People from all over the world, every ethnic group, rich and poor, sitting together and enjoying the amazing riches of the king of the universe. But Jesus' story isn't over. When the king came in to see the guests, He noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. And it wasn't that this man was too poor. The point is that the man just didn't care. He hadn't prepared. He didn't respect the king enough to even change his clothes here for this meal that they were going to have. The the king says, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? And the man didn't have anything to say. Then the king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot. And throw him outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. 
You see, not everyone will get into God's banquet. Those who reject him will not be admitted. Now, Jesus was speaking this parable, not just to the Jewish people there 2,000 years ago. He was speaking this story to us. And so we need to read this through and say, where do I fit into this story? Are you one of those people who are invited to God's banquet, but sometimes you're too busy, too busy with your own business, with other things in your life? Well, remember what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount. We studied it in Bible class today. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be. And make sure that your treasure is God's treasure. Do we take for granted God's mercy? and his invitation to come to his kingdom. Do we maybe think, well, yeah, I know I'll be going to heaven because, hey, I grew up in the church or I went to church or something like that. Well, in Jesus' day, these first hearers were tempted to think that they had heaven all locked up because of who they were and what they did. Really, though, the end of the parable brings it all home for us. Do I have the right clothes? Do I have the wedding garments? Or am I trying to get into God's banquet on my terms. See, there's only one way to heaven. Only one way to be properly clothed to get into God's banquet hall, and that is through Jesus. We need to wear the robe of his righteousness. That means we need to stop thinking that we could somehow get into God's kingdom because of who we are, that we are good enough, that our righteousness could somehow make up for the bad things that we did in the past, Instead, we have to put all of our trust, all of our faith in Jesus. Jesus, he's the only human who led a perfect life. He was never selfish. He never looked down upon other people. Jesus, when he spoke, he, he always kept in mind what effect it would have. He never violated even one, one of God's commands. Instead, he spent his time helping other people. He spent his time serving other people instead of himself. He watched what he said, he thought about others, and he always spoke the truth, and he spoke it in love. Love really captivates who Jesus is. Love as in being more concerned about other people than you are about yourself. And it was that love that took Jesus to the cross, where he would take all of our sins upon himself and die, die for humanity. He died for the sins of everyone, no matter what you have done. Jesus has paid the price for it there upon his cross. Jesus, we could say, earned a seat at God's heavenly banquet for every one of us. There's room for all of us, everyone who's lived, who's ever lived, and that includes you. And then Jesus loved you enough to make sure that the message got through to you, through his word of truth. Paul said it in our second lesson. In the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed a righteousness that is by faith from first to last. We are righteous in God's sight because of Jesus as we trust in him. By the way, Martin Luther said that it was those words from Romans that opened the gates of heaven to him as he came to realize that righteousness is a gift from God. It's not what I do, it's what he does completely, a gift given freely in Christ our Savior. And this righteousness, as I said to the children, that's guaranteed to you if you were baptized. Because the Bible says that all of you who are baptized into Christ have been clothed with Christ. His righteousness covers over all of our sins. It is his righteousness that forms the robe that we need so that we can actually get into the presence of the holy God. We can be certain we'll be welcomed into that for eternity because of Jesus and what he's done. And the thing is, God continues to bring this invitation to you when you are tempted to ignore him. This morning, you might have been tempted to think, well, I don't know that I want to go to church. I've got so many other things to do. And yet somehow, God, the Holy Spirit, spoke to your heart, maybe to remind you very directly of what you would receive here, which was the certainty of your forgiveness, the assurance that you You have a home in heaven. That's what God will continue to speak to your heart as he leads you through this life until he finally brings you home on the last day. And now God asks us, his servants, we are to continue extending this invitation. God wants all people to be saved, to come to the knowledge of the truth of Jesus. So, go. As the king said, go to the street corners, 
and invite to the banquet anyone you find. Invite your friends. Invite your neighbors. Invite your fellow students or your co-workers. Invite your enemies, even for that sake. Lead them to recognize their sins, to repent of their sins, and then lead them to trust in Jesus because he is their Savior too. You could say, in the words of our lesson today, come, come to the feast. Amen. Please stand. We join believers around the world confessing our Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. In our prayer of the church, I'll include a petition on behalf of Ellen May Miller, who has been hospitalized in Tennessee, where she went to visit with her son. Uh, they found she has cancer on a kidney. Uh, this is very serious. She may be near the end of her life. We pray that the Lord would be with her, with her family, too, at this time. We turn to our Lord. Our Heavenly Father, who has justified fallen mankind through the suffering and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and has declared that salvation by raising him from the dead, we praise you for your grace and mercy. We could never save ourselves in your sight. No matter how much we try, we are sinners still. Even our righteous deeds are as filthy rags tainted by our sins. Yet we come with boldness before you, for we trust in your Son, knowing that through him there is complete forgiveness for everyone. Forgive every sin that we have ever committed. Justify us for the sake of the dear blood once shed for us, and accept our humble thanks. O Jesus, by humbling yourself and becoming obedient to death for our sins, you have rescued lost sinners like us from certain destruction, providing for us the robe of righteousness cleansed in your blood. Comfort us and give us that surpassing peace which comes from knowing that we are justified and saved by you. All praise to you, our precious Redeemer. Spirit of truth, we bless your holy name because you have awakened our hearts to believe in Christ so that we might make your divine offer of forgiveness and eternal life our own. Continue to fill us with your grace. Keep us steadfast and true in our trust. Enable us to bring forth the fruits of salvation, good works, to the glory of our Savior. Cause all sinners to seek and find cleansing in the blood of Jesus, that being justified from their sins, they may be saved from the wrath which is to come upon the world. Let none of us trust any longer in our own good works for salvation. By increasing our faith, give us strength and patience to endure every affliction that is sent our way to test us and to resist every sin with which we are tempted. Lord, in your mercy, we ask that you would bless Ellen May Miller at this time. We ask that you would provide healing as that is your will, keep the pain away, and assure her of the certainty of a home prepared for her in heaven. Lord, be with the people of Israel and Gaza and Ukraine and other places suffering under war. Punish the wrongdoers, bless the weak and injured, and bring peace in the appropriate time. All this we ask for the sake of Jesus, who has redeemed us, so that we might be justified by grace. Amen. If you're here in person, please sign the Friendship Register before you leave. If you're online, you can go to the description link and sign in, and we'll keep you informed of things going on in the manual. You can support our ministry by leaving an offering at our church in the back, or you can go to our website to support our work. We continue our service with a hymn from our old hymnal, continuing our new hymnal. Uh, we haven't sung it too many times, but it reflects the themes of our service today. Uh, actually, it's a stanza of an old hymn put to a new melody. The hymn, Lord, when your glory I shall see.
Please stand. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart that, being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated, and we conclude with hymn 559. If you're a beloved son, O God. God's blessings to all of you, those joining us online and here in person, and we pray that the gospel has filled your heart with the certainty of God's love now and always. Filled you with overflowing so you can share that with other people too as you go out today. This afternoon we have our trunk or treat. Thank you for those who helped prepare that event today. And so please, uh, if you know of other kids, invite them to come for that. It's a chance for us to extend God's love too. If you'd like to come and just help hand out candy, you could uh, do that also, I think, as things are ready. And also thank you to um, Danny and Katie Baker. There will be a a bounce house too uh, available at the trunk or treat. I think it's just for the kids. 
I, I, but, uh, but we'll see. Well, maybe, maybe an adult could sneak in there too. We'll see how, they, how you like that too. Um, great chance, for, again, for us to share God's love with our community, invite people to learn even more about God's love in the future. God bless you as you have so many opportunities to show the love of God each day and to share the love of God. Please greet the others here as you leave. I'll be standing in the back. I look forward to greeting you there. <laughs>